Hey what's up YouTube, it's Goosebumps Guy here to bring you a brand new video. I'm really excited to bring you guys this video today. As you could read by the title, it's Top 10 Weakest Goosebumps Monsters. Uh, first things first, this it's the weakest, not my least favorite, and it's my opinion as well. So if there's anything on this list that you disagree with, any monsters you think that should be taken off, or any monsters that you think should be added, definitely comment below and we can talk about it, have a discussion, and I might even make a new list in the future, we'll see. And finally, there's going to be a ton of spoilers in this, so be prepared. There's like spoilers to the point where I'm ruining books from the cliffhangers at the end, so yeah definitely be prepared i warned you now don't dislike the video because of spoilers you have been warned so yeah guys sit back relax and i hope you enjoy this video the ghost from ghost speech takes the number 10 spot skip to number nine if you don't want the ending of ghost speech spoiled for you I'll be honest, Ghost Beach is one of my least favorite books and you guys might even see it on my top 10 least favorite Goosebumps books of all time. And this book's about two uh, family members, two cousins, their brother and sister, or I'm just going to call them the Sadler duo, their last name is Sadler. They pretty much go to this beach to visit their older cousins and their older cousins, they seem to be very old, like in their 60s was the Sadler duo. They're in their teens they seem pretty young like 13 and 12 or probably younger than that since like goosebumps books they're probably like 12 and 10 and um yeah so they go to this beach and they're exploring the cemetery and then they meet these three kids and i'm gonna call them the sadler trio they're pretty much uh their cousins the sadler trio that's what they say and their cousins tell them about this ghost that lives um at the top of this hill in this cave and they go ahead and they uh they decide to go check out the cave, the Sadler duo, they decide to check it out and there happens to be something in the cave and that something turns out to be a regular human being and the Sadler trio convince them that this guy's a ghost and he's all messed up and then they have to do this, they have to do some crazy stuff to uh, stop him, I think they have to uh, pretty much ro knock the rocks off a cliff or something that trapped this human inside the cave. And by the end of the book, you realize the uh, the Sadler trio, they were the ghosts all along. And there's another twist, but I'm just going to leave that twist out a bit. But the Sadler trio, they end up being ghosts. And the reason why they made it onto my list, if you didn't realize, they didn't do anything as ghosts. All they did was use their voices. That's seemed to be their only power. Like, they did, at the end of the book, take off their face. And it, it revealed kind of like a skull, which was like not really a good power i guess it's just kind of scary but like out of all the goosebumps monsters these guys really didn't do much they just try to convince some regular humans to kill another human they couldn't do it themselves like previous ghosts we've seen in the past like the ghost from ghost beach where they actually can physically attack people and then they could pick you up they could punch you and they could take over your body so these are just probably the worst type of ghost ever and these are probably the type of ghosts you'd want to here at the number 9 spot are Vampires from Vampire Breath. Vampire Breath is literally batshit crazy, no pun intended. But this book's about uh, two kids named Freddy and uh, I think the girl's name is Carol. And I'm not gonna spoil the whole summary of the story, I'm just pretty much gonna spoil the ending of this story. And so they find this bottle of Vampire Breath as you can see from the title. and. They ended up opening it, they dropped it, and it ended up opening, releasing a vampire called Count Nightwing. And all the vampires that end up meeting throughout the book, Freddy and Kara, are super strong. These guys are very powerful, they're real vampires, you wouldn't want to mess with them. But at the very end of the book, you realize Freddy and Kara are vampires, which pretty much makes them pretty shitty vampires. In my opinion, because throughout the whole book, you think they're humans, they're acting pretty normal, they're very scared, they're very fragile, you, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much why they made it onto my list. Throughout the whole book, they didn't really do anything crazy, they're just normal kids. But at the very twist, or at the very ending of the book, the twist is that they're vampires. So they're probably the weakest vampires you'll ever meet because they just act like normal kids throughout the whole book, like I said, your belief or you're set to believe that they're normal kids, so that's why they got number 9 on my 
At number 8 is The Girl Who Cried Monster. The Girl Who Cried Monster, in a nutshell, is R.L. Stein's version of The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And in this book, there's a girl named Lucy. And she spends some time at the library. I can't remember what exactly she was there for, but she was at the library looking for books. And as you can see by the title of the book, the cover art, that her library she thinks is a monster, which she turns out to be a monster. But Lucy is known for pretty much being the boy who cried wolf, is which is someone who says something is there when it's not there, or says something's being done and it's not being done. So let's say I'm trying to play a prank on someone and I keep telling him there's a monster outside. So when a monster's finally outside and I tell someone, they will not believe me. That's pretty much the moral of the story. But by the end of the book, they realize the librarian is a monster. And um, I'm gonna ruin the twist of this book. So I told you guys there's gonna be a ton of spoilers. But at the very end of this book, uh, Lucy and her family they turn out to be monsters and her parents are like alright we're gonna eat the librarian now because I guess um, I guess fellow monsters don't coexist with each other and pretty much I don't know how much times I said pretty much but yeah pretty much the monsters in this book most of them are pretty they're pretty strong they seem like pretty crazy monsters but then you have Lucy, which is also a monster that is probably the scaredest monster of all time. She acts so scared, but at the end of the book you realize she's a monster and you think to yourself, why was she so scared? Why was she having so much humans of human emotions? But then again, we don't know too much about monsters or what type of monster she actually was, because it just says she's a monster. It doesn't specifically say she's a vampire, she's a ghost, she's a man-eating horse. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, but yeah, that's why she made it onto my list, because she's a monster and she is so, so scared. Taking the number 7 spot are horrors from Horrorland. As you guys know, by my top 10 favorite books, Horrorland is one of my favorite books of all time. It's such a great book, and I remember in that video I said it's the first landmark in Goosebumps books, which was actually false. The first landmark in Goosebumps books was Dark Falls, but Horrorland was the first landmark in Goosebumps books that was revisited multiple times. Horrorland had a spin-off series called Goosebumps Welcome, or uh, Goosebumps Horrorland, and that consisted of over 12 books there was probably about 20 horrorland books i can't remember the exact number which had books from slappy the dummy all the way to monster blood to the haunted mask they brought back a lot of things and in those books they had um kind of like a story where every kid in each book they um they met up and they all met up at Horrorland, and it's a story about every kid from each story meeting up at Horrorland for some some reason. But that's a whole story, and you should check it out. It's one of my favorites, the Horrorland series with all the kids going to Horrorland. And yeah, so what I'm going to be talking about is One Day at Horrorland. And I think the horrors from One Day at Horrorland are really, really weak. If you've read the book, at the ending, they pretty much get away from them from pinching them because the brother Luke he has this pinching thing he calls himself the mad pincher so he like goes around pinching people and once they get to Horrorland there's a no pinching sign so you kind of you kind of see what's gonna happen but then yeah by the end of the book all these horrors are trying to make them do some crazy stuff for their their live tv monster show because they're monsters and they run a monster channel tv show reality tv and they're trying to get them to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff and pretty much by the end of it they realize all they have to do is pinch them and then they're pretty much gone that's how you that's their weakness you pinch them and they die i don't know if they die but you pinch them and they pretty much stop working so you pinch them and they're hurt really badly or they die or they just can't move it's one of those three the book doesn't specifically explain what happens but yeah so the horrors from horrorland all you need to do is pinch him and it's game over so that's that's what makes him really weak but like other than that the book was one of my favorite books of all time as you guys know it's just the horrors are so easy to kill and they put up signs for no pinching which just makes it obvious that don't that, that you need a pinch him to kill them i don't know kind of you, you put a sign up telling s someone not to do something, and they're most likely going to do it for some people, so 
yeah putting a sign up of your weakness that will destroy everybody in every horror in that park is probably not the greatest idea so they're not that smart either but they do run a reality TV show, which is pretty cool. But yeah, guys, you should definitely check out that book. And I'm going to stop ranting now, and we are going to get to number six. Please hear me out on this one, but at number six is a blob that ate everyone. I know some of you guys are thinking I'm an idiot right now for choosing the blob that ate everyone. But I actually just reread this book to make sure that my facts were correct. And throughout this book, there's this boy, Zach, and he's with a few friends, and he finds this uh, old place that got burnt down, probably lightning or something made it burn down, and this lady there gave him this old typewriter. So uh, he starts typing out some stories and stuff, and then he realizes this typewriter is making his stories come to life. So he types out a story about a blob that ate everyone, which is kind of like, I guess, R.O. Stein's version of the blob. Uh, he kind of has like, monster blood and the blob that ate everyone that are kind of like, the blob. But um, yeah, so he starts writing about the blob that ate everyone, and uh, it's pretty much everything comes true, and the blob goes through the city, it starts destroying everything, it sucks people in alive, and it's just just craziness happening in the city and now you guys are even thinking I'm more of an idiot you're like well it destroyed the whole city well if we go to the very last chapter of the book it actually turns out to be the blob is the one that wrote the story about the blob that ate everyone and he's reading it to his friend so it's a pretty weird twist ending but the blob that ate everyone in the book didn't end up being real and the blob people at the end of the book were um we're pretty much just like regular kids. I'm, I'm gonna pull a, right now I'm gonna pull a quote from the book and I'll read it off to you. The last chapter of the blob that ate everyone. Well, did you like my story? The pink blob monster needed the pages he had just read and set them down on the desk. He turned to his friend, a green skinned blob monster. Did you write, did, did you just write that the green monster asked? The pink blob monster gurgled with pride. Yes, did you enjoy it? I did, his friend replied. Thank you for reading it to me. It was very, very well written. What do you call it? I call it Attack of the Humans. Uh, it's Attack of the Humans, the blob monster replied. Did you really like it? Yes, those humans are really gross, his friend replied. Do you know my favorite part? What part? When the blob ate Adam, that was really fun, the green creature declared. So yeah, pretty much you guys understand and get the understanding that these blob monsters are just like humans and they think humans are disgusting monsters. So at the twist ending, in an alternate reality, blob monsters are pretty much humans and the story that you pretty much read from the beginning chapter to the very last chapter was pretty much all fake and I said pretty much about three times I caught myself but yeah, it was all fake pretty good book overall but the ending made these guys really weak coming in at number five is curse of the mummies 2 I'll, I'll be honest with you guys I also didn't like this book because uh, it really didn't do much the whole book it's a story about a boy named Gabe, and he's visiting his uncle Ben Sari in somewhere in Egypt. And it's, I'm pretty sure, Arl Stein's first book based in Egypt, so I kind of enjoyed how it was uh, somewhere else, because if you don't know, Arl Stein usually writes his books in small towns because he grew up in a small town. But uh, yeah, so he goes and sees his uncle Ben that's exploring this pyramid, and then they say there's some pharaoh, and we're gonna skip ahead. They're just searching around the pyramid, they fall through traps, all this stuff happens. And we're just gonna skip to the end of the book because uh, nothing really happens through the beginning to end. Like the middle is just a whole bunch of fillers, and the ending is pretty much when the mummies come. So at the end, they have a. Uh, Uncle Ben's assistant, Ahmed, I think is how you pronounce his name. And uh, he, they figure out he's trying to steal like everything from the mummy's tomb. Oh yeah, and I have to mention, Gabe walks around with the mummy's hand. Like, what a coincidence. But yeah, so he has his mummy hand and he just like walks around with it. And Ahmed's trying to rob them inside the bottom of the tomb. And he's trying to make them jump into like some pit, probably a pit with like 
probably one of the traps because uh, pyramids are filled with traps. And um, yeah, as he has a knife out and he's forcing them to jump in the pit, uh, Gabe pulls out his uh, mummy's hand and uh, he pretty much, uh, I don't know what he does, but he holds it up in the air and uh, Ahmed starts like, I guess he gets like possessed or something and the mummies come to life and they start going after Ahmed and Ahmed has a torch that's lit on fire like you know a burning torch so they could see inside the uh inside the tombs of the pyramid and so the mummies are coming after him he throws the torch at them uh Uncle Ben sorry which is Ben or uh Gabe's cousin and Gabe they all look away and they're pretty much looking away to let so they don't see the mummies throw because they're going after Ahmed and they don't want to see the mummies throw Ahmed in the pit and all of a sudden they open their eyes the mummies are back in their place and Ahmed's running out of the tomb's exit so he's pretty much just running away the mummies are back in their place they didn't do anything other than wake up for a few seconds and if, if you really think about it mummies don't tend if, if you look at the lore of mummies they don't tend to be that strong they're pretty much a zombie you could say and zombies are fairly easy to kill so yeah they're pretty weak in my honest opinion and i actually didn't like this book compared to like some of the other books like horror land was actually one of my favorite books of all time but the horrors are just weak this book i actually just really didn't like and the mummies are really really weak but i did end up liking um uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, it's the other mummy book, which is the uh, the second part of this book, which is like Return to the Mummy's Tomb or something. And uh, this is pretty much Arlstein's version of the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, which is kind of funny because he didn't even bother changing the name of anything. So yeah, it's pretty weird. But yeah, no, honestly, it wasn't that good. The Mummy sucks. So that's why they made it onto the number five spot on my list. Let's get invisible is here at number four. I actually really enjoyed Let's Get Invisible as a kid. I'll need to uh, reread it to see how I like it as an adult now. But this book's about a kid named Max and his brother Lefty and there's a whole bunch of other characters. They introduce a lot of characters at the start of this book for a Goosebumps book. I think there's like from like the first uh, two chapters they introduce like probably six or seven characters it's pretty crazy there's a lot of characters at the starting of this book and they're at i think it's max's birthday party or his brother lefty's birthday party. it's someone's birthday party they're in max's house and they're celebrating and i think they go to play hide and seek in the attic and they find this secret room with the mirror in it and this mirror has uh, a light above it and when that, whenever they pull the light, they pretty much turn invisible and they can just go be invisible, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff. And I remember a line in the book that Lefty said, Lefty was uh, talking about spying on girls or going to the girls' uh, chase room. And I thought that was hilarious because let's be honest, all the guys thought about getting invisible. That's what they thought, thought of doing as a kid. We can be honest here. But um... Yeah, so they start going into the mirror, and they're coming back, they're playing jokes on each other, and uh, Ma Max starts to notice these guys, they're starting to get like an addiction, you could say, to this mirror, they keep wanting to go back for more and more, like all the kids, there's a few kids at the party, there's these two girls that don't really want them to do it, and then there's a few other guys, but the guys, they seem to be like, down with the mirror, I, I don't know, they're just like super brave, I guess, and they keep going back invisible, and there's one scene where one of the kids comes back and his hair is backwards or like kind of like it's not actually backwards like he wouldn't turn his hair cut a 180 degrees but his haircut would have been the way it looked in the mirror if you can understand what i'm saying it's kind of weird you have to like read it to understand but his hair is the wrong way so like look in the mirror imagine your hair flipped the other way around in real life so he came back with his hair flipped and pretty much by the end of the book they notice there's other beings like people kind of that live on the other side of the mirror that are taking over the bodies of the people that go inside of the mirror and lefty accidentally breaks the mirror and by the end of the book oh yeah so i left it a very important part which you guys are definitely just <laughs> understand everything I mean from what I'm saying now, but they call Lefty 
lefty because he's a he throws with his left like he uses his left hand he writes with his left hand he throws a baseball with his left hand he uh, does some other stuff with his left hand <laughs> but uh so that's why he got his name lefty and by the end of the book lefty turned to righty and uh, so lefty is now righty but righty's actually a mirror person that was on the other side of the mirror and that's like if you stay in the mirror too long your reflection takes over and comes into your world so lefty broke or righty broke the mirror and um pretty much lefty will probably never be seen again it's not confirmed but lefty at the end of the book is using his right hand when he never uses his right hand so it kind of leaves you on that cliffhanger but they, they can't really do anything i'll be honest these invisible or not they're not even invisible they're just your reflection your reflection your reflection is just you and they're just as powerless as us humans are so they couldn't really do much yeah so that's why they're number four on my list Taking a number three spot is Deep Trouble. Deep Trouble is pretty much about a boy named Billy and a girl named Sheena Deep, and they're visiting their uncle Dr. D to get that deep. Okay, no, no, but seriously, uh, they're visiting their uncle Dr. D. He's like a marine biologist, a scientist of some sort, studying uh, like aquatic creatures. And the scariest thing in this book is probably the shark you see up above. This book isn't scary at all, but that doesn't mean it's a bad book. So, pretty much what happens in a nutshell is they catch a mermaid. And, yeah, so that's pretty much it. They catch a mermaid and they try to sell it for a million dollars. And they run into a few conflicts, but that's pretty much the monster. Technically a nice person, technically not really a monster. But, still, it's part of a Goosebumps book, and in a sense, she isn't human, and we probably consider a mermaid a monster, according to dictionary definition. Maybe not, who knows, but yeah, she's a mermaid, she's like the little mermaid, I don't know, she's so nice, and I kind of felt bad. It makes you, it actually makes you feel bad for this mermaid, even though it's kind of like the mysterious creature in this book, you actually feel really bad for this mermaid. I, uh, I, I really enjoyed the second one a lot more than this one because I think the second one uh, falls more into a fear of mine because I'm not a great swimmer and I'm pretty scared of, I, I, I'm, I live in Canada so I'm not really scared of the water out here but I'm scared of um, the uh, like waters out in the Caribbean and like that area where they have a lot of sharks, they have like jellyfish and all those crazy things that will kill you. And in the second book, Deep Trouble 2, it makes like a ton of sea creatures become giant creatures. So there's like a goldfish, something you put in a bowl that becomes the size of a car, which that book's great. You should check them both though. You should check out every Goosebumps book, even if they're good or bad, just check them all out. But yeah, that's why I made it to my number three spot. This mermaid really reminded me of Little Mermaid, and I, it makes you feel bad for her. She's not a monster at all. She's just an innocent little mermaid that didn't do anything. Number two goes to My Hairiest Adventures. So this book is interesting at the least. They had a, a pretty cool concept with a pretty crazy twist ending, and this book's about a boy named Larry and his friends, they have a band together. Uh, there's a few friends, I can't really name them all, but the main character is Larry. And not not and it's not Larry from Camp Nightmare. That guy was a jerk. But uh yeah, so this this is a different Larry and so they're playing band or they're just practicing and they find this bottle of Insta Ten or like something along those ends like tanning lotion and they put it on and they all, you can guess what happens, they all start growing hair. And they grow a lot of hair, like, this guy is growing more hair than I have on my face. And I'm, I, I have a substantial amount of hair on my face, a little bit of peach fuzz. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this kid's like 12 and this guy's growing hair that like should be on an animal. And going towards what I just said here that should be on an animal getting towards the end of this book he's just growing hair as you can see by these pretty hilarious pictures uh, he's growing hair in places he's trying to figure out what's going on and by the end of the book he figures out it was not 
It, it had nothing to do with the tanning lotion. It was like expired and they thought it was a tanning lotion or the lotion did something to their skin. But the twist ending was pretty much... There's a doctor in town and the doctor is coming to see Larry because he's growing hair. And this doctor, he actually... Sorry, he actually did uh, experiments on um, dogs and cats. And he can... Uh, inject cats and dogs and make them into humans and this only lasts for about uh 12 12 years or so so after about 12 years of being a human the dog turns back and the uh the mixture the potion whatever it was it doesn't work no more and this doctor was just giving dogs and turning them into kids to his employees which is just super super weird and yeah so pretty much by the end of this book uh he turns out to be a dog and dogs are awesome dogs are super friendly we all love dogs i know everyone here loves dogs and he's technically not a monster but in a sense he is a monster if you know what i mean he's a dog human or was a dog human experiment which is pretty weird but if you guys remember at the starting of the goosebumps intro the g goes the flying g that you're following around the town it goes over a dog and his eyes start glowing well that's uh that's larry yeah so fun fact well yeah that's why i made number two because let's be honest dogs are awesome can you guess who gets the number one spot? I bet a few of you can. It's a ghost next door. This is a really weird book. It goes into so many weird places and does so many weird things. It's just really, really weird. But it's a book about a girl named Han Hannah and a boy named Danny. I almost called her Hanny, incorporating the two names in the one. But yeah, so it's Hannah and Danny. Uh, I'm gonna keep this one a bit shorter, a shorter summary. Cause there's a lot of things that don't really matter but hannah wakes up there's no one home uh she's like kind of wondering where everybody is she's just running around doing her own thing trying to figure out like what's going on like why isn't anyone home where'd everybody go and um so she meets up with danny danny's her, like one of her friends i guess she makes friends with danny and then she starts to think danny's a ghost and uh there's this weird shadow figure that keeps like following her you could say like trying to scare her and pretty much by the end of the book she realizes she's a ghost and what happens is she pretty she, she goes to her house where Danny and these two other kids are and they break into her house and she gets there pretty much just in time and as they're breaking into her house, uh, they set it on fire, these little pyromaniacs. They set the damn house on fire, <laughs> these crazy little kids. And uh, yeah, so the house is burning and Shadow Danny appears again. And, or, ooh, I just ruined that. It wasn't Shadow Danny, but the shadow, <laughs> the shadow appears and it turns out to be Shadow Danny, which is like, I guess another form of Danny and Hannah has to or Hannah does and she has to well she doesn't have to but she saves Danny real Danny from the fire so there's shadow Danny that's trying to scare her and trying to make actual Danny die so shadow Danny could take the place of real Danny and real Danny could take the place of shadow Danny and Hannah saves Danny and by the end of the book you realize she died in that fire and she fades away to go reunite with their family uh, the reason why she's number one on my list versus the dogs is because Hannah's, if, if you read the book, Hannah's a really sweet girl and this, the ending of the book kind of makes you happy but sad at the same time that she's dead. It's ha you're happy that she got to reunite with their family but you're sad that she's dead and you're kind of pissed off that Danny and those kids burnt down the damn house. Like, that's pretty crazy. But if you also seen the Goosebumps movie, they have the character Hannah in it as well. If you haven't seen the Goosebumps movie and you're watching this video, uh, I feel sorry for you. It's a great movie. You should have seen it by now. You should have seen it in theaters. You shouldn't torrent it. But yeah, Hannah's a really sweet girl and she's probably one of the... I don't, I, I don't know, she just seems like a really nice girl, and I think I said that three times already, but I'm trying to get the point through. She's just a regular girl, and she, you can't compare them to, like, the ghost camp ghost, where uh, they're trying to take over bodies, and um, 
get back, uh, like, take over bodies and go live their life in someone else's body, or they're not, like, um, just other ghosts in story. She's just trying to figure out what's going on, what happened to her, what happened to Danny, what's happening in this world, why is everyone missing, and she figures it out, and she turns out to be dead, which is kind of sad. But, yeah, so she's number one because she doesn't have any particular reason to hurt anyone. She doesn't want to hurt anyone. She actually saves Danny in the end, so she seems to be, like, the nicest monster out of all. I wouldn't call her a monster, but technically a ghost would be a monster. But, yeah, so that's who made it on my number one spot. Well, if you guys made it to the end of this video, I have to thank you guys all. This video took a while to make because I've been super busy lately and just pretty much it. I could honestly finish this video in like a weekend easily, but I've just been so busy lately that I couldn't get it done. But I'm happy to bring guys this video and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please uh, leave a thumbs up and leave some comments on who you think is the weakest monster, which ones I should have left out and which ones I should put in. So comment below. Remember to like, remember to subscribe, and you should uh, leave a comment on if I should change the music up in the background. I have the Goosebumps theme song on a loop, so I'm not sure if you guys are enjoying the theme song on a loop in the background while I speak, or if I should just get some other creepy music or something in the background, but be sure to leave a comment, be sure to like and subscribe, you guys are awesome, I appreciate you guys all, and have a good day guys.